came to here to be a professor at Carnegie Mellon. I, I had a professor position and uh, it was some of my startup money that I actually, so when you come to be a professor, they give you some, some money to, to get your research program started. And I put some of that towards this project. This, can I make low cost energy storage? What does it look like and all that? And I leveraged those results to, to sort of start up the rest of this. The company was founded in, in um, 2008 as an incubation effort at Carnegie Mellon. It was funded by some venture cap folks. And the idea at that point was just to prove whether this idea that we had was going to work or not. And after about 18 months, we decided it was it was reasonable enough that we would actually make a go of making a company. So we set up space here over here in uh, Lawrenceville, and we've been scaling our little pilot facility here ever since then. So this would have been 2010 early that that happened. The idea from the beginning was, can I make a way to store energy that's cheap, effective, um, benign environmentally, and uh, can sort of attack the big problem, which is we currently don't have a way to store energy for renewables and for other kinds of power sources that, 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 that work well. They're either too expensive or they're dangerous or whatever. And so the idea was starting with very inexpensive, abundant materials and using them um, in the simplest possible way to make some kind of technology that would store energy. And this brought me to the solution that we have now, which is this uh, aqueous electrolyte sodium ion system that is uh, basically uh, able to cycle indefinitely and doesn't have hardly any of the problems associated with the other batteries. Now it's really big, it's not energy dense, so you could never use it in a vehicle. It's not meant for mobile or, or uh, you know, cell phone kind of application. It's exclusively for larger stationary applications like distributed sources if we're on a microgrid or you're out in the countryside or you're in a developing country. It's a really good solution. It's a novel kind of unit. It's not really 100% battery. It's not really a supercapacitor, which is what part of the, the, the carbon works like. It's putting together these different pieces in a new hybrid way. In fact, we call the product the aqueous hybrid ion battery as opposed to sodium ion battery because it works with a variety of ions inside. There's sodium and there's actually some protons or some hydrogen that's, that's taking place as well. And so all of that uh, comes together in, in sort of um, this intricate uh, system that at first blush I thought was very simple. And after really understanding what the trades were, we evolved into something a little bit different. Um, and so. The real answer is we get to low cost and we get to environmental benignness by using water that is not acidic or basic as our electrolyte. It's a neutral pH salt water and it's sodium sulfite which is like, as I said before, is a preservative material that's used in uh, food packaging and so forth. It's very common. And by using that we have, um, we can use different kinds of electrodes. Um, there's no toxicity. It's easy to manufacture and we don't have to, to handle things either at the factory or on site anywhere uh, with anywhere near the kind of um, control that you might some other battery chemistries. And all of that stuff spells uh, for us a much less expensive product that can really make a difference. Pittsburgh in general is, is a, is a well-endowed region when it comes to um, working class folks who are going to be at, at the factory doing the stuff that we have to have done. Uh, furthermore, it's been it's been nice to have enough support from different locations where uh, they want to, how can we train people for you? Uh, what kind of folks do you need? What's, what, what's the story? I mean, oh gosh, the, the, yeah. California, doing manufacturing in California is exceedingly expensive. Uh, and even, even running something like this there would cost two or three times as much. Property, price, taxation, uh, oversight, all of these things are really, it's hard to do in a lot of locations. But I, we find the Pittsburgh region to be really, really friendly in that regard. It's been a, in fact, some of our investors can't believe how little we spend for some things here compared to some of the other locations for their other companies.